Just a couple of minutes, everybody. Okay, can you hear me now? Can you hear me? Good. Okay. Like I said, I promise after the end of 50 weeks, I will have all of this video stuff worked out. <laughs> it's just crazy. So I don't know how many people are joining us, but I promise it'll be fun. For those of you who did not see my Facebook, look at what came in yesterday. We have Kimberbell's celebration. Main Street Celebration. The CD for the bench pillow. And 
the embellishment kit. Along with, what else came in? Oh, two new leathers. Two new leather colors. We have black and we have white. So I promise I won't go too crazy into this stuff. I just wanted to show you because I was super excited about it. All right. Hopefully enough people will find us and we'll be all set today. All right, we're gonna do a recap here. Some of this stuff you're gonna know and others you're not going to. It's gonna be kind of quirks for this specific pattern. Every pattern has quirks. And unfortunately, you don't always know those quirks until you actually work on the pattern. A uh, few ground rules, not really ground rules, but tips. Uh, best press, which is a starch alternative. If you don't know about it, find some. There's a lot of small piecing and a lot of small half square triangles in this um, quilt. And you really, really want a starch in them. Um, it's the only way to make sure you get these pieced correctly without them stretching and moving. And the seams would be impossible for you to actually meet and match. Now I'm going to show you a couple of things. All right. The first block that we have, we're doing half square triangles. And there are a ton of ways to do half square triangles. We're going to do them according to how uh, the traditional method. Okay, but I'm going to show you a couple of tips and tricks. And unfortunately, when you're working with white on white fabric, sometimes it's impossible to tell right side and the wrong side. Not always, but sometimes. It is very, very difficult to tell. So let me get these together and then we'll go from there. If you are not making the scissors pattern and you are doing the traditional looking quilt, which is fine. Some of the sizes, depending on what size you pick from throw slash lap up to king, you're gonna end up doing more than a hundred blocks to get the size correctly, which is, not a big deal, uh, whatever it is. I think the queen is like 111 blocks. So you have 11 more blocks, 11 duplicated blocks. Just pick the 11 that you like for the outside. You don't wanna pick the 11 um, most uh, easiest to recognize blocks because it still should be kind of a sampler. So you don't wanna have really, really dark, bright blocks in obvious places. Just pick the blocks that one you like, and that will kind of feather in on the sides that won't be too obvious that they're duplicates. Okay, traditionally, we're gonna switch. Okay, this is the first block that we're doing. It's a very simple block. You've got two squares, plus you have half square triangles. 
and the half square triangles are made out of multiple different, if you're doing the make the cut, they're out of multiple different neutral background fabrics. Um, and if you're not doing the make the cut with the scissor, this is what your block will look like, depending on what four colors of fabric that you picked. It's not a difficult block at all. Um, and we are gonna use what they call the traditional method of half, making half square triangles. Okay, what the traditional method is, if I can find what I'm looking for. Okay. Traditional method of making these blocks are two squares bigger than what you actually need, right sides together. And we're going to draw a diagonal line down the center. And you're going to sew a quarter of an inch on either side of this line and then cut right on that line. What that does is that gives you two half square triangles with this one stitched block. That's how this entire quilt is set up, unless you have the templates to do the actual half square triangle cutting, the triangle cutting in the rectangle, rectangles and everything else. What I'm gonna show you now is we're gonna use that method that we just named, but on this first block, I'm gonna follow that line. And if you're using the quarter of an inch foot with the guide, you would put the guide on your line so that your needle and your stitching is a quarter of an inch away. But what I'm also gonna show you, because I'm always looking for methods of doing, you know, my stitching faster, uh, saving time, saving steps. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to do one block like this, and we're also going to chain stitch. And I'll go into that in more detail as we do it. But then I'm also going to do one without doing the, uh, without making the line itself in pen. Depending on the machine that you have, you may have to back stitch. I know um, through my experience, brothers and baby locks. You definitely want to back stitch on both the top and the bottom because the stitching will come undone, especially in a quilt this big. Um, if you don't stitch them right away into rows, you'll get the very beginning stitching here coming undone and you'd have to restitch it anyway. So I highly recommend doing your back stitch. Okay, now traditionally what I would do now is just either back stitch and cut the thread. Lift your foot, turn it around and stitch down this side. This is how you would traditionally make a half square triangle. Okay, see this nice little uh, grid glide mat? This goes on the so steady table to make a nice flat surface and it goes over the seams where the extension table connect to the machine. Well, the lovely thing about this grid glide is if you place it on your machine with your quarter inch and your center lines all matching up to your lines on the machine, you don't necessarily have to draw your lines. You can go slow, meaning I started with my guide on the center part of the square. And down here, I'm gonna bring you probably a little bit closer so that you can see. Okay, down here, I've got this other end of 
the square, the diagonal part, lined up with my line on my grid glide. And as long as I follow that line, it's gonna be exactly where it needs to be on the square. And I'm not even gonna cut the thread. Without the extra step of having to draw a line. Now watch, I'm not gonna even stop there. I'm just gonna keep on going. This is what they mean by chain stitching. I'm gonna do one side. And I'm gonna bring the other one in and just keep on going. You save, I mean, this is not gonna save you an hour, but it does save a little bit of time. Not still not gonna cut my fabrics, except for this one, which is complete. I'm gonna bring it around. You can see the thread right there. Hopefully you can see the thread. And I'm just gonna keep on going, moving this square out of the way a little bit so I can keep an eye on my line. When I first started doing it this way, it takes a little getting used to. And if you have to go slow, then go slow. But eventually you get pretty fast at it and it really does save you a little bit of time. Okay, so then all I'm gonna do is eyeball the center, cutting with my scissor, approximately a quarter of an inch on either side. And when you iron it open, it's kind of hard to tell with these because they are neutrals. But when you iron it open, there's your half square triangle. Okay. You can draw the line in, in the beginning. And if you have the grid glide, just see where your line is. Or if you don't even have the grid glide, you, if you had an extension table with marker, you could actually put a marker. I would recommend putting it underneath the table um, so that it doesn't one rub off or that marking doesn't get onto your fabric, but you could do a marking. I've done that before on the bottom of the table. Okay, we're just gonna iron these. And then lay them back down. Be right back. I figure this way just because I'm ironing it doesn't mean you guys have to be ignored. How's everybody doing? I did not, don't ask me, it just didn't click. So recently, I was picking this day as day to start this, and it's inauguration day. I'm not trying to go political. It's telling you, I thought it was kind of funny that not to even dawn on me when I decided that they were. So I apologize, and hopefully you can watch me afterwards or do double duty and watch both at the same time. No, I'll be watching today. With these being all neutral fabrics, it really doesn't matter which way I iron them as far as setting the seam. It's gonna show through 
come out of each side you do because three of the white will lose the fabric. Which, so we are going to try and iron our seam to the dark side as much as possible with this quilt. But I'm going to warn you ahead of time. This is a hundred blocks with a lot of neutrals and trying to line up the rows and line up all the blocks. It is virtually impossible. Make sure you iron these seams the right way every time. So if you come to grips with that now, you won't have as much trouble later on. All right, let's switch you back here. And we're just gonna line up our blocks. Just a second. All right. Whoops, sorry. I don't mean to get you all dizzy there. Now, you are gonna have extra blocks. There's no way around that. Um, it's just the nature of the beast. I do indicate when you can use these blocks in other blocks. Um, and I just keep a little Ziploc, or in my case, my little pouch here of my extras. You can do something with them on the back. Um, some of them will be used further along in different blocks, but unfortunately that is the nature of the beast in this quilt. There is a lot of extra and a lot of piecing. Okay, so that's your first block. And on all you're gonna do is sew one row at a time, okay? There is a lot of half square triangles, a lot of smaller ones. There are gonna be times where I'm gonna tell you we are only stitching as a scant quarter of an inch to try and get these blocks to be the correct size. And I will let you know before each block. Right now we're just using a quarter of an inch. Um, eventually all of these blocks should be six and a half inches after they're done. I keep this ruler close to me so that when I'm done, I can lay the block, lay it on top of the block and make sure I'm still where I need to be. 
because this is a hundred blocks and it's gonna be pretty quick and easy to get lost and have things start not matching up. You can just use a scant quarter of an inch almost the entire time if you'd want. Just realize you're gonna to have to trim each block up when you're done to get it down to six and a half. And I don't worry about ironing these seams yet until I'm done with the three rows. If you do not have a quarter inch foot with a guide yet, please pick one up. It makes life so much easier if you're not trying to look down at the machine constantly to follow a line. Because everything in quilting just about is based on a quarter inch seam allowance. I will be posting these to YouTube. Um, today, so as soon as each week the block is done, the video is done, we'll be putting them on YouTube. I will eventually, hopefully, be able to figure out how to do videos on Facebook and YouTube at the same time, but that's not this week because it didn't go well when I tried it, unfortunately. Let's see. This one. Okay. All I'm doing is these going to make two half square triangles together. And it's hard to see in this colors with the white on white, but two half square triangles together with the, making a dot, uh, triangle here is a flying geese. And I'm trying to keep these flying geese fabrics the same. It's not necessary, but it's just what I decided to do. And hopefully I can get my father-in-law to make a bar for me so that the camera isn't in my way all the time. Because I still want you, I mean, I have two cameras for a reason so that you can look down and see exactly what I'm sewing, but um, also so I can switch them out. It's just a matter of getting it organized. Comfortable. Okay. Here are my three rows. Now, what I'm going to do, and what I like to do is when I iron this first row, I'm going to iron the seams in. The second row, I'm going to iron these seams out. And the final row, I'm going to uh, iron the seams in. What this is going to do is give me the option to um, sandwich the seams and then align them and get them all lined up perfectly. Nesting the seams, I should say. Being neat with your seams is a very difficult task, but it's something that 
if you can learn early, it will make your life much easier. All right, back. So there are my three rows. Basically, this is what nesting the seams means. You have one seam going one way, one seam going the other way. And if you plan this, they will sandwich or nest together very flat. And that's how you line your seam up, seams up. If this is the only lesson that you learn today or learn while I'm teaching this, it is a very, very valuable lesson. And it's a lesson that's hard to learn if you're not told how to do it. I was not told how to do it until much later. And Listen, most of my, a lot of my quilts are not perfect. I never claim to be perfect, but that's okay. I'm fine with it. Quilting should be fun, um, not perfect, because there's nobody that's perfect. But like most quilters, I am my worst enemy. So I would get very upset with myself and rip things out until I got it done perfect. I never, ever, ever, did I say never? Um, stitch over my pins, ever. Only a few things gonna happen. Most of the time you might be fine, but that one in a million time, um, the pin could break in your machine causing issues with the machine and you'd have to get it fixed. I've seen pins snap, you know, the needle snap and come back at somebody and um, you could get hit in the eye. It's just not, it's not a good idea. And I'm gonna show you a trick that I learned on pinning. This quilt is, it's a great quilt to learn blocks. It's a great quilt to get some experience from, but don't drive yourself crazy. This block includes a ton, I mean, this quilt is gonna have a lot of neutrals. It's gonna be a busy quilt, even if you do not make the scissors. Do not worry about one little seam here or there because it's not gonna make a difference. Have some fun. Okay, as you can see, hopefully you can see, my seams are pretty lined up. I wouldn't say perfect, because like I said, nobody's perfect. Now, I'm gonna do it on this side and I'm gonna show you again. And I'm gonna show you my little trick for pinning. Okay. It's going in the machine from this side. Yeah. Line up the seams. If it lays nice and flat and it's sandwiched, you should be right on the line. So what I do is I'm gonna put and I, we use flat pins in quilting most of the time. One, they're longer, and two, they lay nice and flat. So you don't have a bubble right at the seam. So when I am pinning, I do it on an angle. See how far it's going down this way? I'm catching the seam on one side and coming up on the other side. Why do I do that? Well. Nobody told me how to do it. It's just something that I learned so that I can sew along 
stop with my needle down right in the seam. That's right where you're stitched, where you stitch these two pieces together before I have to pull the pin out because I don't sew over pins. Sometimes you can line it up perfectly and pin it, but just the motion of taking the pin out will move the seam. So I started doing this, I don't know, years and years ago. And I have noticed a huge difference in my lining, uh, lining up of seams. I hope with this 50 weeks, and a lot of these blocks are gonna be simple. Some of them are gonna be a little crazy. Some of them you probably will never do again. But I want, what I do hope with this is that you enjoy it. You learn a tip or trick or anything, but you have fun. So I've stopped with the needle down right where the stitch my thread is which connects this block to this block before I actually pull the pin. So I'm not going over the pins, but I'm taking them out at the last possible second. If you have any questions, by all means, type them in. Um, I can see the comments today. I'm not gonna guarantee I'm gonna get every comment, but if not during the video, after the video for sure. Yeah. Now I'm gonna iron it. This is the first block. So it doesn't matter where we're gonna iron the seams. I went with iron them out towards the top and the bottom, almost because that's how they wanted to go. And again, starch is your friend. Lots of starch. You can't really over starch. There is no such thing. At least if you use best press, you can't over starch. If you use the old fashioned spray starch, oh, yes, you can. Okay. So we're going to set the seam. Basically, we're going to put a quick iron over the seam while it's both down and then iron it out. I'm going to put some starch and iron again. Starch with this quilt is really going to help a lot. Especially when we get down to some of the smaller half stretch ends. And if you can learn to be as neat, and I'll tell you, with this quilt, it's going to be very, very difficult, but you can do pretty good. Try to be as neat as possible. If that's something that you have never tried or never um, um, aspired to do, this quilt, you really should. Um, not saying it's going to be perfect every time. But the more your seams lay flat, the easier it's going to be for you to piece this quilt. So we've got one block done, and we're gonna do the second block. And I'm just putting my, pretty consistent, that's all I care about. Doesn't have to be exact, because fabric stretches a little bit here and there, but as long as it's pretty consistent, that's all you have to worry about. Nobody is gonna notice. If one seam is off here or there in the grand scheme of things, especially when you're looking at the quilt as a whole. Good morning, Kathy. How are you? Okay, block two.
Okay, here's your block two. I know it's kind of hard to tell with the the glide. I'll with the glare. I will lay it out also, but I, as you can see, I put a note over here to make sure that these two line up these seams. I had trouble with that before in because I've already made these blocks. Um, and that's where I had issues. All right, so we are going to lay it out just like the picture. And I'll tell you, with the amount of neutrals that I used in this quilt, it really does not matter on these first blocks. Um, whether the fabrics are in the exact right spot or not, because nobody is going to be able to tell. The only thing that's hard to tell is times front and back. There is the block. Hopefully, another thing you'll learn is to be able to look at the pieces and be able to put them together so that they make a block. It's not as easy sometimes, and I'll show you later on as we get through more blocks where I had problems. This one, I mean, it's pretty simple. You can put all of these pieces together as in a mini row. So here's your first row. Put these two pieces together there's your second row put these two pieces together there's your third row and your final row is right there if you put these together this is a mirror image of it and you do the same thing on this side and you sew the two halves together you could also do little mini blocks okay so you put these two fabrics together and sew it to that one there's your block this one we've sewed this one to this one and then sew this one together. Yes, it looks like this one is shorter than the rest of this, but you gotta account for the seam allowance. So by the time you sew these two pieces together, this one should be exactly the same size. If you do those four little minis, then you can do this mini to this mini, this mini to this mini, and have the two halves and sew them together. Either way, it doesn't matter. It will matter in some blocks further on, and I will make sure to point those out to you because you don't, Unless you like doing Y seams, most of us don't want to do a Y seam if we can make, uh, help it. So I will make sure to point you in the correct direction. And I am just going to chain piece. So I'm just going to sew the pieces together that need to be and not break my thread. And then just cut the thread in between. I'll be right back when we iron these seams.
All right. Come back. So we're just going to keep going. If you have any questions at all, just let me know. First few blocks are pretty simple. Most of the blocks are simple. What gets a little bit tricky is when you have a lot of small half square triangles and you're trying to get everything, all the seams to match at the end and making sure that the block is the correct size. Not impossible by any stretch of the imagination, just takes a little bit of extra work and diligence. Just going to cut. It's going to be a lot of repeat with this quilt, and I'm just going to iron my seams, but I think it's a great quilt for you to burn on. All right. There are our three mini blocks. So I can already see that I did a little Okay. Now, this is where we're gonna, I'm gonna have a slight problem, but it's a perfect opportunity to show you what I do to fix it. And it's not gonna be the only time that we have to do this in this quilt. There is a lot of stitching in a hundred blocks, which means a lot of seams to align and you're not always gonna be able to get them exactly where you want. On this bottom block, the seam is going this way. Originally, I sewed this in with the seam going the same way. So I'm gonna take the longer of the seams and just finger press it over. You have a couple of options. You can unstitch a few stitches, which I'll show you that here. Um, two and three, push the seam over and re sew that one little part. It's probably the cleanest way to do it or, and I'll show you another one. The only, one of the other reasons why I think you need to be very, very neat or as neat as possible with your seams is Eventually, when you want to quilt this, if you have a lot of bulky seams, it's not going to make life easy. All right. If, let's see. Yeah. If we could not have unstitched it, I would have taken the larger seam and finger pressed it over. 
and tried to iron this part right here as down as thin and as flat as possible just to get my seams to align. But we did unstitch it and we stitched that just that quick little three stitches. So we're good. This is why I told you to be careful with that seam. So now we have want the top seam going to the right, the bottom seam going to the left. So we can easily nest the seams. Put the pin in on the diagonal. I'm right-handed, so that's how I remember which side to start with the pin to get it on that angle. So. And stop right in my stitch line because that is the seam with the needle down before I actually pull the pin. So we don't stitch over the pin, but we give ourselves the best chance to get the seams to align. And it took me a while to figure that out. I would be great at pinning and still my seams would not line up. Beautiful. Okay, this one we don't have a seam to worry about. We're just going to stitch it. It did take me a little while to figure that out, but I could pin so well and then my seam still would not line up. Very, very frustrating. What I figured out is just the action of taking the pin out is what caused the seams to shift a lot. Okay. This one, I'm gonna iron the seam down. This one, I'm gonna iron the seam up. Sometimes I don't decide where that's going until I actually look at the back and figure out where the least amount of bulk is for the seams, just to try and keep it as neat as possible. Now we've got this seam coming down and this seam going up so we can easily align and nest the seams. I really hope you get something out of this next 50 weeks. Even if it just, if you, if you get one thing out of this that makes you more comfortable in your quilting and piecing, um, and I consider it a win. But above all, I really, really hope you have fun. Okay, I'm right in the seam with the needle down. And I'm gonna take the pin. But I do hope you have fun and enjoy it. It's been very relaxing to me for the most part putting all these blocks together. There you go. And all I have to do is iron it. What I recommend now, is to start putting the rows together right away. I did not do this in the beginning because I had two goats to cut in one complete one to sew together. So I was constantly checking the blocks against, um, against each other. But this quilt is gonna be 10 rows of 10 blocks. That's if you're doing the scissors. If you're not doing the scissors, make sure you check which size block you're doing. So I recommend you actually stitch these together as you complete two blocks. And the nice thing is this one does not have any seams to match. 
just sewing but because you've got a big quilt to do I still highly recommend that you backstitch at the, the beginning and the end there you go all right everybody I have to open up the doors but leave me a comment if you have any questions or problems and I will answer you um, I will be working today to get this video up on YouTube as quickly as possible. It just depends on how quickly it downloads for me. All right. Have a great day, everybody. Bye. Thanks for joining.